right, so Warren, um, this was the last of our four-part series, Like a Child, a very challenging service this morning. And um, it was, my God can do anything. Just yeah. like a child would say, my God can do anything. But we know that's God's power, and mm. there's, a, there's a big word for it. It's His omnipotence. Yeah. So can you tell us what is... What does it mean for God to be omnipotent? So God's omnipotence is the fact that he is all-powerful. So the Bible would speak about the Lord Almighty mm -hmm. and God Almighty. And that meaning is that there is nothing too powerful, too great for him to achieve. But God always works within the limits and the bounds that he sets. Mm. So it's not that he can just do anything outside of himself. He still works within those rules. Otherwise, he wouldn't be God. So he's not going to do things outside of his character. So when it says God can do anything, it means God can do anything within his character. But his anything mm. and our anything are very different and that's the difference so the story that we had this morning was with mary and literally saying that things that are impossible with man mm -hmm. are possible with god so you might not think it can happen but we're dealing with the god who created all things that's it it can and that, those were the three points my god can and yeah. that's the easy part that's the easy part for us to say we often say the lord can but the second point was, my God will. And sometimes that is a little bit difficult. But what about when he doesn't, Warren? Mm. So that's probably the area that we battle with the most. So it's it's a great sermon. Mm. <laughs> it's a great sermon. It's very encouraging and you know to get everybody hyped up and rah, rah, and God's going to do these great things in your yes. life. And the reality is sometimes he doesn't. Mm. And how does that fit with our Christian faith? Because many times people lose their faith because God doesn't do what yes. they were expecting him to do. Yes. And that's where it's important for us to see that mm. the picture is so much bigger. Yes. That if God chooses not to, so like the Lord, I mean, he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm. He knew what was coming and he said, Father... If it is your will, let this cup pass. But if not, then I'm here to do your will. And that's the most important prayer you could ever pray. Absolutely. Thy will be done. So the bigger picture is that God is going to achieve something far greater than what it is that you are asking. That's it. So all of the Bible stories, if you take every single famous Bible story, you name it, they all had a place in their life at a time where they had no clue mm -hmm. what God was going to do. Mm -hmm. They thought that he can. Mm -hmm. They believed that he would. Mm -hmm. And amazingly, he did even more than what they were expecting. Yes. And so we, have the, we serve the same God. And our God literally can do anything. That's it. So when he doesn't, we, we still believe. Amen. Our focus is very often on our physical needs um, and we often also told in churches that we want to see his work in our financial lives, we want to prosper, we want to see maybe healing in an illness mm. and it's very hard for us to fathom him working with eternal things mm. um, and whether it's to benefit our family eternally or whether it's to benefit ourselves eternally. Um, it's sometimes very difficult to see. Can you touch on, on how he works um, for eternal rewards? So what we have is when God works with us, our focus is always on physical because we live in a physical world. Mm. So we see that our physical needs are our primary needs, and it's not. Yes. Our physical needs are secondary. Mm -hmm. So... To try and understand that, though, is it's the, the struggle between the spirit and the flesh, mm. is to try and emphasize and elevate spiritual things above physical things. So the book of Corinthians tells us that the things that we see are temporary, mm. but the things that are unseen are eternal. Mm. 
So when we come before God and we say, my God can do anything, please do this physical thing so that I can see something temporary that's going to change right here in front of me so that I can have faith or because I don't like it or whatever, I'm uncomfortable in the situation. And God says, but these physical things, they're going to pass. Mm -hmm. What if I leave the physical thing Mm -hmm. and I do something eternal that is perhaps unseen? Mm. So to me, you want to speak about miracles now. And and, and I, I love this. I love this. I don't know why our human minds work like this. God, heal me miraculously from an illness. Mm. Wow, my God is great. Yes. God, change my heart mm. for all of eternity and make me into a new person. Beautiful. And I'm saying, well, mm-hmm. which do you really want? So I'm going to say, let's go with the eternal. But the eternal is not necessarily as mm. showy and mm-hmm. it's not going to impact as, as great immediately. So it's going to take time. But let me tell you, there is nothing more beautiful than mm. seeing somebody's life changed where they couldn't imagine that they could be who they are now. Absolutely. And that's the unseen that is eternal so we pray and we say i believe god can Mm -hmm. i believe he will but even if he doesn't i still believe because that's what i really want to see that's it i want to see that eternal life changed beautiful I think the very challenging part of this morning's message was you shared a little bit of your personal testimony Mm. um, and you challenged us that the Lord wants to use every single one of us, that he has that purpose for us. We often hear that, but we are quite stubborn in that we often want to stay in our comfort zones. And you said in the message, the Lord doesn't want to use us there. He wants to get to our weaknesses, to our vulnerabilities, because that's where the, the work is going to happen. Mm. And that's where we can really impact the lives of others with, with his message. So I don't, I don't want to say that God cannot work in our comfort zones, mm. because I believe he can. I just think that we limit him in those comfort zones. When we step out of our comfort zones... That's when we start literally putting our money where our mouth is. That's where we start putting our faith into action. And Mm -hmm. that's what God is looking for. So to sit back and to say, well, I think that God can do anything, but you know what? I'm not even going to let him try. Yeah. You're never going to see it. And you're never going to benefit from from having that, that story to tell of, I never thought that I could. I never thought that God would be able to. I never thought that he would use me. I never thought, if you're never going to get out of your comfort zone, Mm. you don't get to tell the story. So stepping out of your comfort zone, I think is one of the most important things for us to do. And it's, it's a challenge. And I'm not saying irresponsibly. I'm not saying step out of your comfort zone to do stupid things. Mm. I'm saying when you know that the Lord is calling you to do something great, but you're uncomfortable about it. Mm. And you know that it is according to his character. It's according to exactly what he would want you to do. Mm-hmm. But you are uneasy and you're a little bit afraid and you're uncomfortable, maybe slightly anxious. Mm -hmm. And in that moment is when you have to lean on him. And what is that? That's exercising faith like a child. Amen. So when Paul writes and he says, I would rather boast in my infirmities. Mm -hmm. I would rather that God uses me in my weaknesses because then I am at my strongest. You see, our comfort zone is when I feel that God is going to use me in my strengths. Yes. In my abilities. Mm -hmm. So in all the things that I can control and I've got this, don't Mm -hmm. worry. And And I'm gifted, yeah. And that's where we want to work. And then God says, well, I can do even greater work with Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. if you just step out over here. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, again, it's, it's, it's all those stories. I mean, there were, there were 12 disciples on the boat. Only one stepped out. Hmm. Who gets to tell the story? Nobody cares about the 11 that were sitting there, um, not even rocking the boat. I mean, they were just sitting there. So the story centers around Peter. 
he was the one who stepped out to walk on the water to go and meet the Lord. And he was the one ultimately who the Lord used in such an incredible way because he was willing to step out of whatever that comfort zone was. Mm. And so that's what the Lord calls us to. Just step out and just see the life that I have for you. Mm. That the things that I want to do that you thought were impossible. But with me, nothing is impossible. Beautiful.